When I think about my curatorial practice, there are three main things that really center everything that I do. The first is thinking about African people, our narratives, our histories, the works of African artists. And as someone who's African of African descent, I want to be part of the voices that are shaping the narratives of people who share similar heritage with me. And so not just Africans, but also African Americans and black people by diasporic connections. The second thing that really speaks to my work is thinking of how we can educate, how we can empower. And across the board, the arts is something that can really penetrate our walls. You know, we can sometimes read the newspaper and if we don't agree with what it is, we quickly walk away or shut it down. But when we look at art, it makes us question whether we like it or not, these thoughts stay within our head, whether it's music, whether it's visual art, whether it's theater, whatever it is, the art is a powerful tool that we could really harness to engage, to educate, to empower people. And the third thing is thinking about community. Everything that I do, I want it to be in connection. In being in Omaha, I want to bring in the voices of people in Omaha. And so like even within this exhibition, there's Celeste Butler, who's a quiltpreneur, a quilt maker, um, and her work is featured in this exhibition. What is it the Omaha people are speaking on? What are they thinking, particularly the black community in Omaha? The exhibition, uh, Neo Custodians, Woven Narrative, of heritage, cultural memory, and belonging was originally inspired by my grandfather, who in his autobiography, Coping with Three Cultures, encouraged me and my cousins to stay rooted in our culture. Uh, for my time at the Bemis, uh, my research, I wanted to focus it on how materials often act as capsules of culture. Um, I look at the way Africans have always, through cloth, told stories. They've woven narratives uh, through iconography, through weaving patterns into the actual fabrics that are worn by different colors or weaving styles. Each thing meant a different thing. By the images that were put on the cloth, the embodied aspects of the cultures or the people. And so this was how it was done originally. And I wanted to think about how uh, contemporary artists are working through that, how they're embodying these practices, how they're embodying these notions in the art that they're creating. And that's how we arrived at the 13 artists. This exhibition, Neo Custodians, specifically focuses on the materials, having us question how artists are using these materials, why they're using these materials, and what are the histories behind these materials. So for example, I could think of uh, an artist in the exhibition, Ella Natsui, who's working with liquor bottle caps. And with his work, he's looking at the exchange, uh, the trade route that was created during the colonial era. Um, liquor was one of the objects used um, as a form of currency, as a form of exchange during this time. And so intentionally working with these liquor bottle caps and creating this undulating, magnificent works, you see how he speaks to the different trade routes, to the, to the connections between Africa, Europe, and the Americas. This kind of dialogue that has been going on for centuries, how it started and where it kind of is at this moment. There are other artists like Enam Benwoyo, who is working with pantyhose, but she's specifically looking at how for decades and centuries, all women depended on hoisery. However, for African-American women or black women, there was no hoisery or pantyhose that was their actual shade. It acted as a form of marginalization for a particular demographic. Um, looking at how her mother, a nurse, had to wear this pantyhose for years, how she as a girl looked around, whether it was with dolls, and never found one in her shade. And so intentionally working in craft work, such as knitting and weaving, or she's tapping into the immense wealth of healing that is available in, in craft work, in working with one's hands. And you have so many other artists in the exhibition who are looking at either personal narratives or sociopolitical narratives um, and using the materials to speak to that. Coming to Omaha really influenced the direction of my research and what I was thinking for for the exhibition. This was my first time living in the Midwest and so when I got here I kind of felt out of body, out of place. But it was really interesting because a couple months after I arrived, Yinka Shonibara sculpture was installed at the Jean Leahy Mall which is literally like five minutes walk from Bemis. During a walk I looked across and I saw it towering above the skies and it was just so beautiful. And in that moment, it made me feel connected to this place because I thought, look at me, a girl from Lagos here in Omaha. And here's this artist who's of Nigerian descent as me with their work standing in here, Midwest, Nebraska. 
And so that really made me feel connected, but also I think more than just the nationality of the artist, it was more about what work it was. It was one of his wind sculptures. Um, and most of, if not all, Yinka Shonibare's works are clad in what a lot of people in Nigeria call African prints, a lot of people in Africa call African print, but they're actually Dutch wax fabrics. The history behind them, which Yinka kind of plays with in his work, is how they were originally uh, made by the Dutch um, and marketed to Indonesia. They rejected it. It was then shipped to Africa and it was widely accepted. I mean, these have become fabrics that we incorporate into our cultures. You know, my mom growing up used to wear this fabric. And so coming and seeing here in Omaha in a public sculpture it took me back. It connected me to my roots. It connected me to who I am and then made me focus on thinking about textiles specifically, how they function as capsules of culture, how they function as continuing and preserving the identity of a people.